Hello all, this is Jarek Defiler, and welcome to the next video of my new series, Games for Non-Gamers, the FPS genre. We're using Doom 2016 as our game of choice, and in the last video we took a detailed look into game settings. This one we're going to be delving into controller and mouse and keyboard settings. Now this should be fairly simple stuff, very basic and straightforward. But again, this is a series for non-gamers or people who are just getting started in games. So I want to go through as much detail as possible when it comes to the settings and options menus, or at least as much detail as I can muster, because hopefully somebody out there will learn a little bit of something. Okay, we're going to start with the controller options, but as you can see, because we're on PC, I don't have one plugged in, so the option is grayed out and I can't select anything. The mouse and keyboard is generally what you want to use. I've said this before when you're playing FPS because it's just far more accurate and better overall than using a controller. But hey, it's up to the player. You know, on single player, it doesn't really matter. Multiplayer, you almost always want to use a mouse and keyboard if you're more competitive type. Um, but if you're just chill, lay back kind of casual gamer, and controller is fine for FPS. But we don't have one plugged in, and we're going to do that now. So we're going to take a moment to plug it in. You're going to hear the little Windows jingle. about 50 times and then we're going to see it become highlighted and Steam is going to give me a notification down here saying hey you're using a PlayStation 4 controller now all right so we're going to give that a click now the first thing you'll probably notice when starting up the controller settings in an FPS game is the controller layout Doom 2016 has a visual effect right here that shows an Xbox controller um, you can also use other controllers as well your PlayStation are just generic brand controllers that have the same mapping as a PlayStation or Xbox controller. Uh, personally, I prefer PlayStation 4 controllers, but hey, it's up to you as a player, you know. But generally, because Windows is owned by Microsoft and Microsoft owns Xbox, they use Xbox uh, controller format. So that's what we're seeing here. Um, and if you go up here to the controller layout, click on that, you'll see the different options of controls and the, the button mapping that you can adjust uh, for your controller. This is another problem that I have with using controllers in FPS games is oftentimes they will not let you keybind the actual buttons you wish. So here we just have basically what are templates. These are controller layout templates where as you can see as I hover over each one it just switches a couple of the buttons. Now what happens if you don't like any of these buttons? or you don't like any of these layouts, you're kind of screwed because you don't have any other choice. You can't you know, change each individual button yourself. Some games allow this, which is pretty awesome, but it's rare. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're looking to use a controller that you might not be able to have the button layout that you wish. Now, as you can see here, if you want to read every single one of these just to find out what they do, uh, you know, that can help out. And then hey test it out maybe and then you can switch it to classic oh now that changed just a couple things switch it to knuckles and oh now that changed a couple more things so just get a feel for it get what you don't you know, see what you like um, personally I just stick with mouse and keyboard but hey there you go everybody's different we each have their own personal tastes and preferences all right let's begin with the left column here starting with horizontal sensitivity what horizontal sensitivity is, is the looking speed along the X axis, so looking left to right. If we go down here to the Xbox controller layout, you'll see this right joystick right here. This is your look function, so you use this mainly to look left, right, up, down, whereas the left joystick is used to move left, right, forward, back. Uh, you can also do other mapping on here like photo mode for the left joystick melee glory kill use on the right joystick that means if you're pressing it down you'll see the little icon there with the arrow pointing down that means press it down and you'll get these options but mainly you're just using it to look around so horizontal sensitivity and vertical sensitivity specifically affect the right joystick the looking speed on that and as i said before horizontal sensitivity is the, the x axis so at 100 percent you're looking left and right rather fast. If you go down to 1%, you're going to be looking left and right a lot slower. Uh, I prefer to have this in the lower range, specifically because it's just more accurate and you can compensate for that slow looking speed with better movement and positioning of your character. 
Now the vertical sensitivity is pretty much the same thing, except this is going to affect the looking speed along the Y axis. So up and down, and again, 100% it's gonna be fairly fast, go down to 1%, and it's going to be a little bit slower for a little bit more control and accuracy. Now look smoothing is an interesting function, also known as smoothing acceleration seen down here, or if you're using a mouse, mouse acceleration. Uh, developers put this in the game in order to help you out with your look speed so it's really helpful when it comes to using a controller because the de developers know you're at a disadvantage using a controller so when you're using the joystick to look what look smoothing does is it will slowly ramp up your look speed so when you start out looking left to right say it'll start out slower and then it'll ramp up to its regular speed this helps out makes it a bit more controllable a bit more smooth but some people might not like it. Personally, I don't really like to use any acceleration or smoothing mechanics. I prefer to be more accurate and pinpoint with my movement. So I tend to have this stuff off. But if you take this down to 0%, turn it off pretty much, you'll see that it just basically is kind of frantic because there's no acceleration. So you're just moving at maximum speed right out of the gate. But if we put it back up to 100%, then you'll see that, oh, okay, there's a little bit of a slow movement there at the start, and then it goes up and ramps up to its regular speed. So this might help out some people. It's uh, probably good for new gamers, so I wouldn't you know, have any problems using it if you're a new gamer. But um, it's gonna be confusing in the long run because you're have it's basically compensating, so you don't have full control of your movement per se. All right, moving on to the right column, starting with invert look. What this does is when toggled on it will switch the looking on the Y axis. So if you look down on the joystick or the thumbstick here, your character in the screen is actually going to look up and vice versa. If you move up here on the joystick, then your character on screen is going to look down. Uh, personally, I don't prefer that for uh, f uh, FPS games. Flight simulators is really good. Anything where you're flying a vehicle or you know, a helicopter or a jet or something, I prefer to have that on. But in FPS games, I don't. A lot of people do, however, so this is a good option to have because some people just dig that sort of thing when it comes to FPS games. Uh, personally, I don't, but hey, again, it's up to personal preference. Moving down, vibration is just the vibrating function on your controller. Pretty much all modern day controllers have a vibration pack in it. So when there's a big cinematic or explosion on screen or you're getting shot, or you're shooting a big gun or something, then the controller will slightly vibrate. It's just a fun little mechanic to have, so I always keep that on, just gives a little bit of immersion when playing. Aim assist is uh, something that is pretty much unique to controllers in FPS games, because again, the developers know that you're at a disadvantage using controllers and using thumbsticks or joysticks, so they throw in these little compensating mechanics, aim assist being one of them. What aim assist does is it's not a lock-on or an auto aim function it's more a soft lock function so when you get close to an enemy on your with your cursor or your crosshair then the aim assist will kick in and it'll basically slow down your look speed and then slightly stay on target of the enemy that you're fighting very slightly it's, it's kind of hard to notice if you have it on or off unless you're a really experienced gamer but as a new gamer it's generally a good idea if you're using a controller to have it um, toggled on because it can be helpful even if you don't really notice it right off the bat it does help um, personally I prefer not to use it because again like I said the same with look smooth and I prefer to have more control and this takes a little bit away from you and um, but not that much of a, of a problem so as a new gamer it's probably a good idea to have and Lastly, the enable function. All this does is enable or disable the use of your controller. So if you have it off, then your controller won't be active so you don't accidentally hit a button or something like that. And if you have it on, then it'll you know, allow full use of your controller. Um, now, I'm not gonna go over all these functions in this video. I'll probably do this once I get to the actual gameplay video where I show how to play the in-game stuff. So I'll, I'll go over what each one of these does and means. Um, but for now, we're going to move on to the mouse and keyboard settings. Now, upon first gazing at the mouse and keyboard settings, it might look a little scarce, but this isn't exactly the case, and you'll find that out when you click on the key bindings option right here. This is going to open up the keyboard key bindings, and as you can see, there is a lot of options here. 
This is the advantage of using mouse and keyboard in not only in FPS games, but just PC games in general, is that you have all these options and you can generally, depending on the game, you can generally keybind each one as you wish. Uh, this is a fairly basic setup uh, for FPS. I haven't really changed too much outside of like E for crouch and things like that. Um, you know, I have, I use, use F for use. This is just my personal taste, but most of this stuff is basic and standard. Um, I'm not going to go through each and every one of these. Again, like I said, with, when regarding the controller, is that I'll, I'll go through all these functions when I actually get to the gameplay video of where I show how to do movement and use the mechanics in the game and whatnot. Um, for now, I just wanted to give a brief overview of this, of the key bindings. Um, just showing that, hey, you can use this uh, to your advantage because you can change and switch each key binding as you wish. And that's a glorious thing. You even have your you know, mouse options in here. But we're going to go back right now. And we're going to look at inverse mouse look. All this does is it's the equivalent to the controller's Y-axis um, change on their invert look. Where if you move the mouse down, the character in the screen is going to look up. And if you move the mouse up, the character in the screen is going to look down. Um, again, I don't prefer this because it's, it can get confusing only when I use flying um, machines and things like that in games, jets and planes and stuff. But the option is there for those who like it, and that's a very good option to have. Uh, mouse look speed is just what it sounds like. This is going to be unlike the controller where you have different settings for the y-axis y and x-axis. With the mouse, it's just all in one because your mouse can move in multiple dimensions or directions, I guess you can say. So, if you have this all the way down, it's going to be very slow, as you can see. But if we move it all the way up, it's going to be extremely fast, often too fast to the point where you can't really control it. I, again, when using a controller, I tend to have this on low settings. So, I put it at three, that's why I usually keep it at, because the, the lower the setting, the more accurate you can be because your, your, your cursor and your crosshair aren't going to be shifting all over the place suddenly. And you can compensate with that, like I said before, with your movement and positioning. Razer Chroma is software used by Razer and in their integrated devices such as keyboards, fans, uh, mice, things like that, even speakers. It's basically just RGB lighting, really colorful, pretty lighting that is uh, integrated with the games. A lot of, it depends on the games which have it. This obviously has it because the option is here. So you activate it and deactivate it. If you wanted to have all these colorful spectrums and whatnot that kind of coincide with the gameplay. So if you might shoot something in a big explosion, it might change to red lighting or something like that. Or if you're in a pretty colorful area that's all blue and stuff, it might change your keyboard, your mice to blue. Just depends, I don't really use it, so I'm not 100% familiar with it. But a lot of people like it these days, a lot of kids like it, a lot of adults too, so don't be hating. But it's good for if you want a nice immersive experience and you want your room to look like a disco hall or a club or something like that, it's just up to you. A lot of new gamers probably won't have this technology, it can get kind of expensive. But for the hardcore gamers and game enthusiasts, it's a, a good option to have. A lot of games are coming out with it these days. All right, so that should do it for this video. I just wanted to do a little quick detailed look into controller and mouse and keyboard settings. And hopefully you guys learned something. Uh, next video, we'll be looking at audio and video settings. And then we'll probably be doing a separate video for the advanced settings itself. So hopefully that will give somebody some information that they desperately, desperately, desperately need. Because, you know, if you didn't have games in life, why would you want to exist? No, not really. Either ways, that's it for me for today. So you guys have a good morning, afternoon, evening, and night, depending on where you are. I'm out.